Greetings all and welcome to a oxygen not included moment. Uh, this is my living on methane base. Uh, this was inspired by a Francis John video where he showed off several uh, similar bases uh, created by his viewers. Uh, the primary focus was to make a self-sustaining base which has uses one kilogram per second of uh, solid methane. Uh, as its sole input. So I thought this was a cool idea and so I created my own. And here it is. So I'm going to first do a quick walkthrough of the major uh, sections in this and then go into more detail on the uh, uh, some of some of the uh, nitty-gritties of how things work and uh, how uh, those solution problems I've discovered and solved etc. All right so up here we've got this is basically because I created this in the base game, no DLC, and also in sandbox mode rather than debug mode. Uh, so I, this is what this does is it mines out uh, solid methane, creates solid methane chunks, which then get fed in through a uh, uh, a rail system. Okay, uh, so I do have to about every thirty some, uh, every thirty ish. Uh, Cycle, uh, cycles I need to give it more uh, more solid methane but otherwise no touch this has been running for over a hundred cycles with no nothing on my side okay that's then put down to this which is a melter which creates uh, which melts the methane to create natural gas which is then uh, sucked up by these two pumps and fed to these 12 natural gas generators which turn the uh, one, one kilogram per second of natural gas into 750 grams per second of polluted water, 250 grams per second of CO2, and 888 watt. Oh, sorry, 8,888 watts. So lots of power. So power is not a problem for this base. Uh, but now all I have to do is to turn polluted water and carbon dioxide into food and oxygen for the duplicants to uh, to use. So the carbon dioxide is pumped over here to uh, uh, this uh, uh, molten slickster ranch of my own design and I will take more details of that later. The molten slicksters consume the carbon dioxide and create petroleum which is then fed into the petroleum generator which creates more carbon dioxide and more polluted water. The slicksters also create eggs. When the eggs hatch they are drowned and turned into meat. The meat is fed up to uh, the the electric grill up here where it's turned into barbecue and that feeds the dupes. So food. Also down here is an exosuit forge. One of the things which uh, in the Francis John challenge was you had to have one exosuit, well one atmosuit or equivalent for each duplicant and a way of repairing it. So I've got the exosuit forge down here and a thimble reed plant up here. Thimble replant being fairly easy because this is actually quite easy because thimble replant just needs some polluted water. So cool. All right. The polluted water is fed up to here where it is boiled to create steam. Uh, so the, uh, the steam is then fed into the steam generator. The steam generator condenses the steam down to water. The water is then sent to the electrolyzer. The electrolyzer changes the water into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is pumped over here for yeah, create some uh, uh, some yet more power. Um, the oxygen is then pumped over to the duplicates where they breathe it. They, they create some carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is down here and pumped back over here. So really uh, it, simple step process uh, unlike some of the builds in, in uh, the Francis John video which use some rather in, innovative ways of, of of creating resources. This is fairly straightforward, actually a little brute force in some ways. Okay, so let's get into some of the bits. Uh, so up here, the uh, so obviously the auto sweeper loads up the conveyor loader. Uh, this is a what is it called? A conveyor meter uh, that's connected to this. Uh, so this pump, uh, this is limited to one kilogram per second. So after he receives one kilogram, he locks, and then 
the timer, which is set to half a second off, half a second on, uh, pumps it in. That then pumps down to the melter. The melter has this uh, liquid tepidizer, which is set to zero degrees Celsius. Why zero? Uh, I need a number. Uh, I could go, if I go cooler, that means the, the, uh, the natural gas coming out is cooler, but it means this gets colder and that I'm ha actually I fight with cold more than I fight with hot. Um, so it's, you know, I'm sure there's some optimization here, but zero is like, eh. I mean, you don't want the too cold going into this area, the, the, sorry, natural gas too cold because you could, you know, you could freeze the polluted water and that's not what I want to have happen. Okay, so let's get down to the natural gas. Um, so that brings a nice point to look at the ventil the gas pumps. All right, so let's take it step by step. Gas is fairly simple here. So as I say, natural gas, one kilogram per second comes in here and gets fed through this manifold to these uh, 12 natural gas meters. There's actually a little bit of radiant piping here to give some cooling. Uh, the as I say, that creates carbon dioxide, which is fed down here. So this feeds into the Slickster uh, stable, the ranch down here. The uh, what's funny is that at the beginning, because there's only I only I gradually add Slicksters, uh, gradually uh, to increase the population. Most of the carbon dioxide goes up the chimney, and I don't goes up to the space vacuum. Uh, and so a lot of, of the car of carbon dioxide is flown up there because this is full. But now we have nine slicksters, well, eight and one uh, slicksters. It's using most of it, and there's not much excess going up. It's very interesting. Uh, so one of the things is is for you know self-sustaining base, you want an excess rather than perfect because perfect is too unstable. Uh, so try to have an excess and uh, so in this case there's there's excess of carbon dioxide not as much as I would you know like there's there's not much but there's some okay the one of the things I uh, discovered was when the uh, you know I've made this is looking at the wiki the wiki says that hey the ventral gas scenario produces carbon dioxide at um, 110 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Look at that. It said 20 something. So I discovered no, it does not. It really, I think what happens is the, it's, there's a little bit of storage and that exchanges heat with the natural gas generator. So both the natural gas and the polluted water kind of come out more or less at the temperature of the natural gas generator itself. So that means that in here, I need some heat production. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, talk about up here. So we've got the electrolyzer producing uh, oxygen and hydrogen. I went with the brute force of doing a gas gas filter in here. Yeah, I'm sure that there's oxygen, I include people who say, but you should use this whatever technique. I don't care. Natural gas filter is 100% reliable uh, the, and I have power to spare. Typically, other things, you, you're saving power. I've got more of the power than I need. I'm, I'm wasting, you know, I think it's uh, 5,000 watts per, you know. I, I'm wasting huge amounts of, of power, just huge. It's just, I don't need that much. Okay, hydrogen goes down here. Again, a lot of, of, of bridges here for, for uh, prioritization, uh, uh, making sure that there's no backflows, etc. So hydrogen goes down here, oxygen goes here. There's two directions for the oxygen that come out of here. First goes down to feed one, the first uh, atmos suit. Uh, this is the one that every, you know, everyone wants to use. The reason for this is I want this up and running as fast as possible uh, so that then they can get down and start ranching. Uh, the, this does mean that this is hot, so this is a fairly hot uh, gas, but in an atmos suit, hot gases don't matter. So big deal. All right. Then it, spl uh, it splits here and goes up here and goes through the cooling here. 
So again, cools it. And look here, even though this is set to open at 22 degrees Celsius, uh, this is down to 15, 16, like it's cold. Uh, any excess, and see there's a bunch of excess oxygen, uh, flows up here and so it goes again up to the uh, uh, up the flue, up the chimney. Oxygen here feeds up here into the uh, gas, uh, top gas pipe. Then next priority is the bottom uh, gas vent. And then the finally is to feed the, the remaining Atmos suits. So that is the natural gas. All right. So let's simple enough the uh, uh, one of the things I discovered is in one of my earlier this is like the ninth major revision it, uh, so many so many revisions trying to discover things one of the things I discovered originally the 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 hamster wheels were down here but at the startup there's actually I mean this is it takes a while for the for the water to start getting produced, which takes, and therefore there's time, uh, and that until this, uh, the water is also used to uh, to feed the, uh, the lavatory and sink, so it's got to start building a, a building up backlog there. Um, it's got to build a backlog up here for this atmosphere. So the amount of oxygen actually flowing into the uh, uh, into the, the 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 living area is only a quarter because it's half halved here and well halved for the 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 half of it flows to the the washrooms and then a half again flows down to here so a quarter of the oxygen so they're pretty they're they're a little skimpy on oxygen to start with until it really gets going and so the duplicates when they they get out of breath will say oh I need to go find some oxygen and they go up. And so I originally, my first, my, I was applying oxygen on here. Okay, I'll put the oxygen here and it'll float up. Well, they'd go up and there wouldn't be much oxygen up there. So they spend more time up there and not as, you know, that they wouldn't be, you know, on their hamster wheels. Uh, so I eventually just they realized that, hey, I put the hamster wheels up here and I put the oxygen up here. This, therefore, provides the most oxygen. They're most closest to the top. They're not spending time running up and down. Best way to do it. Okay. Let's talk about the hatch ranch down here. So, or sorry, not slickster ranch. Uh, slicksters are a little annoying to ranch uh, versus a hatch. Uh, first, the uh, one is that you, unlike a, a hatch where you can force the hatch to fall down through doors, etc., they don't. You can't force them. Uh, so, they, you really only have to work within their little you know, back and forth type stuff. Uh, the other is slickster larva can jump too, just like the main slickters. Whereas a hatch, the, uh, the 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 baby hatch can't jump too, so you can segregate them off that way. Okay. Uh, my original one of the original design. So this basically has. So you've got the main uh, the main ranch here. Uh, we have a thermo aqua tuner here. Its responsibility is to keep the carbon dioxide warm. So we need to keep this up to 100, you know, 100 degrees Celsius uh, so that these guys are producing uh, molten slickster eggs rather than normal slickster eggs or even worse, worse long hair slickster eggs. Okay, uh, so this uh, thermo aqua tuner, all it does is produce heat. So it just it wants if 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 the uh, if it's less than 100 degrees Celsius here, it's going to run and produce heat. Uh, I can't use a uh, the what is where this guy up here is. Can't use a space here because the space here won't go up to 100 degrees. So this is the way to produce heat. Uh, so we have eight slickers in here. Uh, nicely producing petroleum when it is that there's this extra room here so what we're doing is this is basically a staging area so when it is set up so this door is open well let's go back to this simple drowning trap so 
Critter sensor is set to open, so the door is open if there is no are no creatures critters in this area. So when the critter hatches, the door closes. That then produce uh, then these cells are filled with liquid, and the critter drowns. Then critter drowns. There's no critter there anymore. Door opens. The auto sweeper picks up the meat, tosses in the conveyor, and out out it goes. This one is set up so it's got an or here. So if there is, so it, the door is open if there is no are no slicksters here and there are no slicksters here. So if I, the door is open if there are no slicksters. So there's less than one slickster here or here. Uh, so slickster hatch if there's no slicksters. If there are no slicksters in here, the slickster will produce up here, then these and then these two uh, critter sensors are set so that this door closes if there's one and only one slickster in the uh, in here. So if we get two slicksters hatching, I only want one of them in here. Uh, remember this is also a slickster larva, so not a full grown slickster. So a slickster larva, uh, this then closes. This uh, the slickster then just sits. He just waits there until this critter sensor says there are less than eight slicksters here. So then when there are eight less than eight slicksters in this area and the door is closed, then this critter pickup gets activated. The rancher comes down, wrangles the slickster, moves them over here, and that repopulates it. I originally had it set up so that, or my previous test, uh, previous build had it set up so this door this outer door was also automated so when you had less than eight slicksters this door would open the slickster would jump out but then all the other slicksters would jump in and then this area would never clear and system fails however the slickster the critters won't go through a door that the duplicates open so I can use the critter pickup so the so the duplicate can go through the uh, can open the door go in the other slickers don't follow them, etc. All right, this thing. Um, anything else of interest here? Yeah. So as a, this auto sweeper picks up eggs, moves them up, uh, puts them in here, goes through the the solid filter, which determines whether it's a molten slickster egg or a non-molten. Right. Uh, what this does mean is, I mean, hopefully, in theory, that the slickster goes from being a Larva to a uh, to an adult in here and pop uh, before he moves over. So oh, he got one going here. So a little slickster larva goes in here, door closes. Good chunk. So he's now trapped in here, and we'll wait until one of these slicksters dies. All right, back out. Zoom back out. Here. Now to talk about the big part. So plumbing. Wow. All right. Most of this here is a cooling loop. And the cooling loop has three tasks to perform. First is to keep the living area between 22 and 37 degrees Celsius, which is the living, which is the temperature uh, range of the thimble reed plant. So that's the main, that's first step. The second is it needs to be a heat sink for all the buildings that might overheat. Uh, so we want to keep, you know, the natural gas generators cool, uh, keep the hydrogen uh, cool. Anything which doesn't, uh, which is, which is, you know, generating heat and therefore going to overheat needs to be cooled. The third is it provides a cool sink for the uh, uh, the thermal aqua tuners, the one used in the boiler and the one used in the ranch. So it's doing three things. It also has a, a, it's a distribution, so it provides a little extra uh, polluted water to, uh, to feed the thimble reed plant because the uh, uh, duplicates don't produce enough polluted water on their own. So a little extra polluted water there. All right, let's go through this step by step. So right here, 
Excuse me. <coughs> so first it goes through the, the so we start and again we're talking excess and controls. So the water first goes through a uh, so the fluid water first uh, goes through a um, to, to, what is this a thermo uh, liquid tepidizer to which is set to uh, to 30 no 30 degrees 30 I can't remember what's that to Abo uh, okay yeah it wants to keep it up to 30 trying to keep it up to 37 cooling tends to be because this is running most of the time I've got 14 degrees of cooling in the system you know, uh, for most of it at the very beginning there's even more because there's 28 because this one is going as well um, so liquid tepidizer to try and bring the uh, bring the liquid up to 37 degrees Celsius then this one triggers if it's above 36 degrees and so we'll bring it back down within that 22 you know uh, that, that uh, uh, 22 to 37 degree that then flows through the building uh, and then up here cools off the uh, the steam turbine so this is an actively cooled steam turbine rather than, you know I probably it probably could get away with being a um, self-cooled but eh, I've got it goes through here goes through the uh, power section this actually I should have the pipes going through uh, across the top of the um, uh, rather than going through the through the tiles I should go over go top because right now is basically heat transfer is from the natural gas generator to the uh, the polluted the open polluted water here to the tiles to the pipes to the liquid pipe you might ask why are these pipes not radiant because I if you have a radiant pipe it basically it will te it will come up to temperature very quickly very, within only a f like three or four um, uh, three or four segments. Whereas I want to take that cooling all the way through all of these, not just this little spot here. Okay, then goes here, goes through the thermo aqua tuner down here in the the ranch, up again through a thermo aqua tuner here. Then back up here, cools off this steam turbine, cools off the uh, the hydrogen hydrogen generator, and out we go. So, now this here, this little pump here is basically just, it's designed to basically pump liquid, uh, is to prime this, because if I was relying upon just the polluted water produced by the uh, natural gas generators, it would take forever, so I cheat, put a water in here uh, this is empty it's actually supposed to be uh, turned off by some uh, automation but I broke the automation so we'll just I'll show this off this little automation here I broke I broke it so it's supposed to be through a set reset and some delays but that's fine back to this all right but this segment here Again, is it because I'm K? I'm sucking. This, as you can see here, sucking some uh, polluted water out of here. I have this, which puts extra a little bit of polluted water back in. Okay, let's talk about the polluted water here. Oh, so I didn't mention that. Um, I wanted to go back, so I forgot that. This mini pump here is basically to take the CO2 from the uh, uh, the duplicates and push it back into the system so here this is a element sensor and a high pressure gas vent so if there's co2 in here it opens up and pushes in if it's see, just a little bit. Um, if this mini gas pump picks up some oxygen it'll be closed and it will just flow out uh, it also at the very beginning I have a block of uh, solid uh, methane uh, for the dupes to uh, Dupes to mine out because otherwise, I have I, it does I can't set the the uh, uh, set the conveyor loader, uh, so that then creates some natural gas. So again, this guy pumps it back out and up the flue. Okay, 
there's also a delay on this, and not, so this is set to oxygen with a delay. So this only comes on when this has been on for a certain amount of time. So again, to try and reduce how much uh, just on off on that. I get mostly that. All right. So as I say, polluted water some goes in here just to refill. Polluted water goes over here from so sorry. Back to some stuff here. So the petroleum, which the slicksters generate, is fed to the natural gas generator. This limonene pump picks up any polluted water and pushes it into the system. This picks up the polluted water from the natural gas generator, pushes it up here, goes through a liquid temperizer to bring it up to 85 degrees. Because this is, I want to boil the, the, the polluted water, so the faster I can bring up the temp, the better. I also use this as a little bit of cooling here for the, uh, for the, uh, the electrolyzer uh, because I I had it running and it was slick stable but I would like to have some active cooling in there it's not a lot I mean we're talking about from 85 degrees I mean this is it's pretty hot water coming up here but it's like 90 so it's putting out 90 degree oxygen so I want to keep it you know again pulls out a little bit of it adds a little more a little more heat into the system which means then the uh, uh, the thermal aqua tuner doesn't have to work as hard to produce the water. All right, back here. So the steam steam generator, uh, no, steam turbine uh, creates water. Split half of it goes to the electrolyzer, half of it goes up through through this to cool it off. Again, because we're talking fairly hot, this is you know ninety some yes. So we want to cool this off before it gets to up here. Uh, this is really uncontrolled-ish cooling. It doesn't have as, you know, as I say, it's it's colder than I would like, but that's life. Uh, that's the water here. Uh, again, we've got the polluted water from the uh, from the, uh, the the lavatory in the sink it gets pushed over here to the um, to the thimble reed. The reason this is this has excess is because if the thimble reed doesn't isn't growing, this backs up, and if it backs up far enough, these stop working, and then we have accidents. That's actually a tricky part. All right. So we talk about this stuff here, uh, and then here uh, is a cooling loop for a deep freeze. We'll talk about that a little later. All right. So. I think I've covered off everything there. Oh, power. All right. Power. You may have noticed the uh, the smart battery here. Why do I have a single smart battery? I mean, there's no battery bank and everything else, and I'm producing more, more power than I need. That is basically a... So once this starts, is I... Okay, so on startup, the duplicants... Uh, are on the on their manual generators that's producing power which is then used to power these two pumps which start natural gas flowing into because there's excess natural gas in here I start with 10 kilograms uh, per uh, per tile per cell is the uh, uh, so that starts these up and then when the smart battery fills up it goes green or goes red because it doesn't need to get filled anymore. That then throws this automation wire, which is connected to each of these uh, switches. So these are basically like a, a, a contactors in a big EV. So they go chunk and start allowing power flow through the transformers into the system and also lock out the uh, the manual generators from uh, from from this system, so they're no longer uh, no longer powering the two pumps. Instead, they start powering the uh, the deep freeze. We'll get into that in a minute. So, power-wise, there's so each is a big backbone, uh, which really is only power, uh, powers powers the transformers and the uh, the pump down here. So there's several system uh, several different uh, uh, power circuits. Top here is, produce, is for the melter and the miner. 
Then here it takes care of the electrolyzer and this uh, thermooctator. Again, each one of these is basically set so that it is you know 1920. So it's it's uh, there shouldn't be any issues with it uh, breaking. Down here, another uh, thing for another aqua tuner and some of the other bits. Oh, sorry, the aqua tuner. So this, this is primarily the aqua tuner and then some others. This one handles the two liquid typodizers. This is for the bottom. This was actually, you know, it says it's overloaded, but these guys, everything on, almost everything on here runs intermittently. So you're not going to have all of the, uh, all of the, uh, Auto, auto loaders and everything else all going at once so there's no risk of this burning out the hydrogen generators actually use the power of the base so the lights and the electric um, electric grill and even the atmos suit dock are all powered off of the hydrogen generator so it's sort of interesting that obviously if these lights come on you know it's like once this system pressure produces hydrogen it goes kick and everything comes on it's quite cool as I mentioned, the uh, the the, the dupes on their manual generator actually power the thermal aqua tuner, uh, which is used to uh, to create the deep freeze. Uh, what's interesting is that the, it will actually the thermal aqua tuner will actually work even if all three are not active so there seems to be a little bit of a battery there so it goes all right that brings actually an interesting point here you'll notice here this little timer for the uh, timer and that is controlling the uh, through an AND gate or sorry uh, yeah or gate or gate uh, so it's solid on when it's when the uh, when we're charging, and then we have this because what I discovered is once the duplicate gets on the uh, the manual generator, they don't get off until their schedule changes. So even if one of the uh, slicksters needs to get groomed or there's uh, you know meat that needs to be grilled, they won't get off. So this is connected basically here to disable it. Uh, so it's set for green for 12 seconds and red for one second. So basically kick them off. <laughs> so they go do something else. All right. Uh, talk about it a little bit. So there is a space heater here. Uh, that's because again, this tends at the begin, startup tends to be a little cold. So I put the space, I found that I have to put a space heater just to keep this warm at the beginning. Uh, this is actually set to 30 degrees. It should probably be at 22, but Eh, whatever, uh, 30 is fine. Uh, rooms, cool. Uh, so this is a great hall. And then we have a washroom and then the private bedrooms. All right. Uh, oh, those of you may notice there's only four, four duplicates and there are five, uh, both five Atmos suits and five bedrooms. When I originally started thinking about this, I did a spreadsheet, which was basically trying to figure out, you know, how many duplicates can I handle? And my calculation said I had just a smidge over 5,000 kilocalories per cycle. So I put, you know, I said, okay, it could handle five normal dupes, maybe. So I figured I'd start, I'd start you know, let, let it run for a bit and then try and figure out how many, how much my stuff is. Um, however, when I was uh, rolling my dupes, one of these duplicates has a bottomless stomach. So he would eat normally, he normally eats 1500. So I couldn't handle five dupes anyway with that. I've since gone back and over from cycle 100 to 200, it had an excess of 200 kilocalories per cycle. So not enough. Even if I didn't have the bottomless, I wouldn't be able to support it. And I think part of that is because the, uh, the slickster, or the way a ranch works is these slicksters are happy. So for a period of time, uh, groomed. 
So for 1.3, well, until they fall out of that groomed, the rancher doesn't come down and and groom them. So for when they fall out of that groom, they become unhappy, which then drops their reproduction rate. So they aren't so for they aren't getting that full, you know, 17 percent per cycle, a uh, hundred percent of the time. Instead, they're getting it for 90% of the time, maybe even less. And so then for that 90% of the time, so that means that they aren't producing quite as many eggs, which means obviously not as much meat, which means the other is uh, a smaller amount, which is a, that the uh, slicksters at the end of the life cycle, there's a die off. So there's, and so there's a, 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 a you're probably missing an egg there because it takes a little bit of time. Maybe you're partially through a cycle, an egg cycle when they die, and it takes a little bit of time for the, uh, the, the new slickster to start creating eggs, so you lose one. Uh, has a minor, minor impact there. Uh, that's also why I have, we have in here a refrigerator deep freeze. This is very simple. It, it, it's, you know, we have a, uh, a aqua, thermal aqua tuner. I'm using pro, uh, uh, petroleum here rather than uh, rather than uh, super coolant. That's just because I was trying to avoid using uh, space materials in this build. Uh, although I did end up having to use it down here for these two mini pumps uh, because obviously they're in a hot zone. I could build this with using normal pumps, but uh, mini pumps, I, I, I bending my rule to make it a little more compact was happier for me. Okay, so I had originally ha uh, had, was just using a refrigerator, but then refrigerator meant that because I, uh, that you would have uh, the food going stale because it's not in a deep freeze. The that then led to the, um, also meant, and duplicates will eat the freshest food rather than the whole stale food, which meant that food, instead of becoming a, uh, a buffer, uh, instead rotted out. Uh, so you'd actually end up with even less food, etc. So, what was I going with this? So anyway, yeah, that, that originally I didn't have, I didn't have a buffer, which is why I put the, uh, the deep freeze in here because I needed some stuff here. So deep freeze here, it's, it's hydrogen gas and the, uh, uh, with the radiant pipe behind it. This is a, uh, the, the airlock here with a uh, vacuum here. Same thing. This is a vacuum here for a temperature, uh, temperature break between these two things. Although I just realized that's probably cold. That should be, hold on. That's supposed to be that. Because it was probably leaking. If I go here, it was, it's probably cooler down here. Anyway, probably leaking some, some heat through that. Uh, yeah. So, again, that uh, you don't get full production because the... Uh, the ranchers don't groom them until they need grooming. And so the time difference between then they need grooming and when they're groomed reduces their, um, reduces their reproduction rate, which means fewer, uh, fewer eggs, which means less meat. So that's it. Uh, any other bits I wanted to mention on this? I think that's it. So thank you for, 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 uh, for sticking around. I will add the link to the video for the Francis John video so you can go see all of the crazy builds that other people came up with and their over unity stuff. Oh, that is one thing uh, I do. I should have in here is a uh, conveyor loader here for rotten food because this will eventually fill up and then you'll start getting rotten food because any barbecue that can't fit in the fridge will just sit on the floor and then eventually rot out. Okay.
So, or maybe put it so that it just picks up barbecue, but at a lower priority than the refrigerator. Oh, I could do that. That would be cool. All right. Again, have a great day, and uh, thank you for watching.